I've been asked if I could create a video on how to capture a simulation recording. So I'm going to record a simple business task of entering a sales order in the S4HANA cloud system. Don't worry if you don't actually use this system or you never create sales orders or don't need to create material for that. It's really the mechanics of how to do it that I want to explain in this video. So I'm going to start from producer. I'm going to select the group that I want to create my simulation in and then create new object. Now, if you have a template set up, make sure you select that. If you don't, go to the Objects tab of the New Object dialog box and select Simulation here. But here I do have a simulation template, so I'm going to select that. I then get prompted for a name. And here you can see I have an option to select a template or another simulation to use as a template. And I'm selecting also Save to Server to make sure that it's saved to the server and backed up. That will drop me into the project editor. Now, because I've used a template, I already have some information in here. These two steps on the left-hand side, start and end, were brought in by the template. Now, important, if information is brought in by your template, make sure you select the step after which you want the new recording to be inserted. Here, by default, it assumes that you want to put it at the end of any existing content, so it has step two, end, selected, and it will put the recording after that. That's not what I want, so I need to select the start step, and then my simulation recording will be inserted after this and before the end. Again, only if you have content coming in from the template. Otherwise, this whole panel on the left-hand side will be empty, and you can just click the Start Record button. So from here, I click the Record Application button on the toolbar. That comes up with a dialog box of all of the applications that are currently running on my PC, and I have to select which one I want to record. Here I know it's the Google Chrome window. I select that, and Enable Now will bring that to the front so that I can confirm it is the correct application. Also, as soon as I select an application, SAP Enable Now will prompt with what it thinks is the best recording profile to use for the application. The recording profile is like SAP Enable Now's secret source. It's what it uses to know how the application was built so that it can retrieve the context from it correctly. The object names, any tool tips, that kind of stuff. So it knows how the application was built. Now, profiles exist for many SAP products because Enable Now is an SAP product and it has profiles for some of the common Microsoft applications. If there is no specific profile for the application you're using, you can use standard for any Windows application or generic web application for anything that's running through the browser. Here it's identified SAP UI 5 as the correct profile to use. That refers to the Fiori interface and that's the correct one for S4 HANA Cloud Edition. So I've got that selected. SAP UI 5 is my profile and I'm gonna click continue. Now on this next screen, I need to choose what area of my display I want to capture in my recording. There's three options across the top here. Region, which says I want to capture a specific region of a specific size. And we'll look at size in a second. Active window records the currently active window on my PC. Now be very careful using this if you're recording an application that has a habit of popping up dialog boxes that are effectively their own standalone windows. SAP GUI and Web GUI are typical examples of this where the dialog box becomes the active window. So if you have active window selected, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna switch from recording the entire application area uh, for example, in this case, if I say this is my dialog box, it will start recording only this area with this dialog box in it because that's the active window. So be very, very careful about using that one. The other option is the one we're going to use here, which is browser content area. Because I'm recording in the browser and I only want the application area of the browser window captured. And I don't want to have my browser tabs, the address bar, my favorites, etc., etc., recorded in my simulation. Because users or trainees do not need to see that. And it just takes up space on the screen that we could show something useful in. Now, before I change that, note the Choose Size option here. This lets me choose the actual size of the area that I want to record. By default, mine is set to 1280 by 800, but there are a number of other options you can choose down here. I'm going to leave it as 1280 by 800. 
Note that I have Fit Application Window selected. I always have this selected by default, especially when I'm recording region or browser content area. What this means is that SAP Enable Now will resize the application window to fit within the chosen size here. So although I initially had my S4 HANA browser window full screen, as soon as I got to this dialog box, it resized that to be exactly 1280 by 800. Now, it's bordered by this red box around here. That's the area that's going to be captured during recording, nothing outside of it. Now, watch what happens to that when I select browser content area. Bearing in mind that I've said I want to record 1280 by 800. At the moment, it's got the whole of this browser window in it. But once I select browser content area, it skips all of this stuff at the top. So the recording area now only starts here at the top of the actual application content. And it's extended it down the bottom a bit to make sure that it's still 800 pixels deep. So that's the area I want to record, only the application. This is very useful for recording browser applications. So next, all I need to do is click record. Now you'll notice that what that's given me is a recording toolbar across the top of the screen. It's always on the top of the screen and it will never overlap the recording area unless you're capturing full screen. Now there's some information on here that we'll look at as we go along. Just know for now that it's green, which means it's ready to record. Now it's important to understand at this point how SAP Enable now captures recordings. It's not full motion video. So everything that's going on on the screen now as I navigate around here, hover over tiles, none of this is being captured in my recording. Only when I interact with the application will Enable now capture something. And how it works is when I do something in the application, a mouse click, key press, or something like that, what it's effectively doing is it's trapping that interaction. So as soon as I click on something, it traps it, captures the screen as it looks before that action is performed, and then it performs the action that it trapped. So when I click on something, it will trap that click, capture the screenshot, then perform that click for me. That's very handy for us. Personally, I like the screens to look exactly like it will look when the user comes into it. You'll notice that a lot of applications have hover over effects. So if you see, as I hover over things on the menu bar here, the text goes a blue color. As I hover over a tile, it gets grayed slightly and I've got this pop-up tooltip as well. I don't want those to be captured on my recordings. So what I tend to do is click on an object, then move the cursor off that object very quickly so the hover over effect is lost. Then Enable Now is capturing that screenshot and then Enable Now will move the cursor back to where it was and perform the action. And you'll see that as I come here. Because what I want to do is I want to go to the sales portion of this screen and that's actually hanging off this more options or more groups drop down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this but as soon as I click on it, I'm going to move the cursor out the way so I don't have this dark blue hover over effect and I don't have the more groups tooltip on there. So watch what happens as I do that. So I'll click on it, move the cursor away. It captures a screenshot and then moves the cursor back to wherever I clicked. You'll also notice that when I did that, the recording bar at the top of the screen briefly flipped to red while Enable now was capturing that information and performing the action for me. And then it goes back to green when it's ready for me to perform the next action for it to capture. Now, some authors have reported that this takes a long time to do, that it goes red and it's five or 10 seconds while it's capturing that information before it flips back to green and they can carry on the next step. And that, if you're doing on every single action, is obviously gonna take way too long. In reality, it should not take any more time than it takes you to do these things in the actual system. So if you find that it is taking more than half a second to record the action that you just performed, check that your recording profile is correct because it may be that Enable Now is using a profile and thinks the application's built a certain way and it's trying to find the information in there, but it can't because it's not the right profile for that application. So check that you're using the correct profile. If the profile you've selected isn't working, try the standard one as a fairly generic one. Make sure that scripting is enabled if you're recording any of the SAP applications, whether that's SAP GUI or S4 HANA, make sure scripting is enabled. Now, if I go back to my recording here, watch the toolbar at the top go red in case you missed it the first time. I'm gonna click on this sales menu option and you can see as I hover over it, it goes gray. So again, I'm gonna click and move the cursor off. Click, move. 
it captures it, moves the cursor back, performs the action, and now I'm on the next step. And same thing here, I've got a hover over effect on that, so I'm gonna click, move, it captures it, moves it back. Now, another thing you want to bear in mind, follow your styles and standards, and hopefully these kind of things have been specified in there. How you navigate around your screens, what you want to be on your screens, that kind of thing. So here, this is a standard screen where I've got a bunch of filter fields at the top of the screen. Should they be displayed or should they be collapsed when the user first comes into here? Decide on that in your styles and standards and then always start your simulation that way. So at this point, I'm ready to just go through my application, perform the steps as I would in reality. So I'm gonna to go to Create, select Create Sales Order, now at this point, there's another interesting thing coming into play specific for Fiori interfaces. Fiori has a, and some other applications may as well, has this dynamic search feature. So as I type, start typing in an input field, it's gonna give me a drop down list of potential matches below that field. Now I don't tend to record that in my simulation and have that every single input field because it gets too disruptive to the learning. So what I tend to do is cover that once in a general navigation or introduction to the interface simulation and then effectively skip over it for all of my task-based simulations. Here, I know the order type is OR. As I start to type OR in this field, it's gonna give me a drop-down list. So I'll type O and it gives me that drop-down list. Now, I could click on OR in this drop-down list here, but again, I don't want to explain this mechanism in every single simulation. So I'm effectively going to pretend that that doesn't really happen. All I'm going to do is I'm going to type OR, and then I'm going to press Enter to confirm, which is a standard thing in Fiori. And I'm effectively going to ignore that drop-down list, and I'll edit it out during editing. And we'll see another example of this in a second. Now, the other thing that I want to do here is there are another three fields on here, sales organization, distribution channel, and division. They're filled in by default. I want to explain to the user that that happens, that they are filled in by default, they can change them if they want to. But I'm not interacting with those fields, so they're not going to be captured in the recording because there's no interaction, so it's never going to take a screenshot of that. So at this point, what I can do if I want to explain these three fields is I can put in an explanation macro. I can do that during editing, but I can also do it during recording. And that's what I want to show you here, because there's, there's one thing that you might need to watch out for. So at this point, I want to insert an explanation bubble that explains what's happening with these three fields. And I can do that from here by going up to the recording toolbar, and you can see I have a couple of menu options in here. I'm gonna to go to insert, and anything that I do on this menu bar is not gonna be captured as actions in my recording, okay? So I'll go to insert, insert explanation. Now, this is the critical part. It gives me a crosshairs cursor. You can see right here that I've got a crosshairs cursor. And I need to click on where I want my bubble to appear or what object I want to tie it to. Here I just want to tie it to basically all of this. So I'm gonna go and click over here because this is where I want my bubble. First thing it's gonna do is give me a dialog box where I can enter my standard bubble texts. I maintain demo text and practice text separately. So I'm just gonna enter my bubble text in here. And I'm gonna take exactly that same text for now and I'm gonna paste it into my practice bubble as well. Now, I click OK to confirm my texts here and it will give me that bubble here and I can drag that to where I want it to go. So over here on the side, that looks fine. As I click on it to select it, I get some other options coming up. I have these grab handles around the sides here that I can use to resize it if I want to. And I have some basic formatting options along the top here as well. Now note that it says demo bubble here. This is the demo text that I'm changing in the demo bubble. I have the option to change a practice bubble here as well. I'm gonna leave it with demo bubble. And I can change the text in here using these formatting options. For example, I can apply bold, I can apply some other basic formatting. That's gonna do for now. Now, the thing I want to show you here is that I want to have a pointer on this bubble and I want that to point to the dialog box. That's done via this setting in the lower right of the editing panel here. This is really the orientation property that you'll see in the editor. But here I want my bubble to be over on the west side of this dialog box and I want the pointer pointing to that dialog box out of the east side here. 
So the orientation I need to select in here is west. I want the bubble to be west of the pointer. However, when I click this, look what happens. It's moved my whole bubble to the far west of what I clicked on. Now I just clicked on my overall screen here. So it's basically pushed it to the far left side of the entire screen, which is basically completely off the screen. But I can see that I still really kind of have it right here at the top. So I can click on that and drag it to where I want it to be. And now you can see I do have my pointer on there, which is exactly what I want. Again, I can change these things during editing, but I may as well do it now. Now, very, very important here. What we've done at the moment is we've paused recording. That's why our recording bar at the top has gone gray. Okay, we've paused recording. So none of what we're doing here is recording. And we're basically creating our bubble that we want to put in here for our explanation. Once we're happy with that, with the text in it, with the position of it, whether it's got a pointer and all of those things, I need to confirm this explanation bubble and go back to recording. And the way I confirm it is by pressing Control and Enter on the keyboard. And it tells me that right at the top here, press Control and Enter to accept or escape to cancel and then it'll throw away this explanation. So it's important to remember that because it's easy to miss that tip right up at the top and wonder how you get back to recording. So from here, I'm gonna press Control, Enter. That confirms that. That has now been saved to my simulation and I'm now ready to carry on recording. You can see my bar is green across the top here. So now I can carry on and perform the rest of my steps in the system. I'll click Create. And now I'll carry on. Here we have another of those fields that has the dynamic search with it. This is a sole two-party field. If you don't know Fiori, I can type in the customer number, the customer name, any search field if I want to. But really what it wants in there is the, the customer number. But I can search on these other things. And as I start typing something in there, it's going to give me a filter list of possible matches. So I know in my case, I want to enter an order for a customer called Skymart. So as I start typing, you'll see that it gives me that filter panel, either above or below, depending on where it's got the most space and where it can fit it in, of all possible matches. Now at this point, I know I'm entering an order for Skymart. I could go and click on Skymart, now I see it. Personally, I tend to keep typing the full search term, the text that I'm gonna search for. It makes more sense to the users during playback if I say, I want to enter an order for Skymart, so let's search for Skymart as opposed to just typing in SKY and then seeing what options are in there. So here I would typically put SKY, M-A-R-T, put the whole thing in there. It will filter it to show only what that one example. And now at this point, I would say, yes, you need to select it from the dropdown. So here in my recording during editing, I would say, start typing the search information. As soon as you see the customer you want to enter the order for, in the dropdown list, you can select it. And this is that selection that I do right now. So now I'm just going to carry on and enter the rest of the information in my order, exactly as I would need to do in the real system, whatever I want the users to see in my recording. Again, for the product, I know I want to uh, search for a product, but I'm not going to explain the whole thing in here. I might want to explain if there's multiple options that it could be, how to identify and select the correct one. And then I'm just gonna perform the rest of my actions. I want one of these, my requested delivery date. This is another interesting field because I'm gonna get a calendar option here. And you might want to explain how to navigate through all of the different uh, months and years, but I would probably not bother doing that in my recording. You don't have a choice but to capture it during the recording, but I would typically edit it out afterwards and say, navigate to and select the required delivery date in the calendar. So here I'm just gonna select a single date on it. And that's really as much information as I need to put into this sales order, very, very simple. Now, at this point, I'll give you another quick tip. If I pause my recording here, it's gonna save all of my progress so far back into Enable Now. So far, everything is kind of stuck in the browser or basically in a cache area. It's not really saved to Enable Now. 
but I want it to be saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this recording. And as soon as I do that, it's going to save everything that I've done. And you'll be able to see this because behind the actual recording area, everything that's grayed out here, which is where it's not going to capture, you can see in the background, I've actually still got producer running. So I've got producer here. And if I look down in the lower left, I can see that I've got this explanation bubble that says that concludes this demonstration. That is my end step. I know that because that's come from my template. Now watch that area and this information here as I pause. I'll pause and you'll see that it's doing some other things in the background. And now I can see that I've got my calendar, which is the last thing I selected. So I know it's put all of that back into Producer for me. Now, why do I do that? There is a auto save feature that you can set as an author and it will automatically save your progress every X minutes, whatever you set it to. But personally, I find that a little bit disruptive, especially with longer simulations, because every 10 minutes or whatever it's set to, it's basically gonna lock up your PC while it saves everything back to producer. And I find that can sometimes get in the way of what I'm doing, especially if I'm mid-sentence on, on typing or something. So when I'm recording only, not when I'm editing, but when I'm recording, I will set auto save off but then again, I do want to make sure that every five minutes or 10 minutes for a longer recording, or when I reach suitable pause points, I do want to manually save myself. And I can do that by pausing the simulation as we just did. I'm not gonna do anything else while it's paused. I will literally pause and then I'll restart recording. And then we're back to where we were. And, and it says the last thing I did was I clicked on 31 in my calendar. It always shows me in the upper left the last thing that I did. So I know exactly what the last thing I did before I paused it was, and I can carry on from where I left off. Now, I'm finished with this. I just want to click the Create button, but I'm going to explain one more feature to you. SAP Enable Now will only capture a screenshot when you do something on the screen. And I want to click on the Create button to finish here, but I know that it's going to come up with a confirmation message. Now that confirmation message is going to be displayed only for a small amount of time. I think it displays for three or four seconds. And I want to capture that message. But because I'm not interacting with that message or anything, there's nothing that prompts Enable Now to capture a screenshot. So I need to tell it manually that that's what I want to do. And that's gonna be up here on the Insert menu. I'm gonna to go to Insert Screenshot. And I need to do that as soon as that message is displayed. I'm explaining it now because it's gonna happen fairly quickly and I need to make sure that I get that in time. So here, my next action is to click Create and it will absolutely capture a screenshot of this screen before the Create button is pressed, which is what we want, but then I'm gonna capture that message that's displayed here. So I'm gonna Create. There's my message, I want to capture that. Insert screenshot, I think I just captured that before it faded. You see, I didn't really have long to do that. So that's how I can capture an image as the screen looks without actually interacting with it. I don't wanna click on that message because then I've now got a click action in my simulation that I need to tidy up. However, important to note that that screenshot is gonna be in a step on its own. I do need to add an explanation frame to it during editing, not the way we looked at earlier here because that will give us another step. So my step with my extra screenshot that I just inserted, if you've not got any macros in there, it's basically not gonna display that screenshot. But for now, I'm done here. But as a last thing, I always like to take the user back to where we were when we started rather than just leave them in the middle of the transaction or the application here. So I'm gonna go back and again, your styles and standards should say whether you just click the back button here or you use the drop down here. I'm gonna use the drop down. So I'm gonna click sales order, select home, and then I'm back to here. So now my recording is finished. I've recorded this task. I've inserted an explanation. I've inserted a screenshot. We're good to go. So I'm gonna finish recording. And that is via this stop button on the recording toolbar right at the top here. I'll click this. It saves everything again. You can see it changing in the background. And then it puts me back into the editor here. And you can see that I now have 24 steps in here versus the two I initially had. So I know it's captured everything for me. All I'm gonna do here is click save just to be absolutely sure it saved everything. And then we're done. So I'm gonna close down this simulation. Obviously I would edit it now, a lot of editing that we'd need to do to it. But for now, as far as this recording goes, I'm done. 
So I'm going to save that. I'm back here. I can see it in my producer work area now. And that's the basics of creating a recording. Hope you found that video useful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and there'll be more along later.